give us understanding unto the same thing. Only the word of God can change your world. As you listen to these voices by Christian Information Network Ministry, your world shall change. Shout hallelujah. If you have joy like a river in your soul, come on, shout a loud hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We bless God for today. Thank God for giving us another Sunday and the beginning of a new week. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Let's have our seats. Those that are worshipping with us for the first time, I want to welcome you especially. Can you please rise up and come and take your seat? Yeah, let's put our hands together to welcome them. All shall lead them to their seats. God bless you. We are glad to have you. Thanks for coming. May you be richly blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. This month is a special month to you, to me, to us, in the name of Jesus. The Lord will do outstanding things in your life. If you believe, say a louder amen. amen. <clears throat> we'll be looking at assessing the kingdom realities. Kingdom realities. All the Sundays in this month, whether I'm the one that preach or not, we'll be looking at that subject, the focus. And I believe God will grant us an access into his kingdom. He will reveal things great and mighty to us in Jesus' name. Let's bow our heads as we pray together. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise, Lord, because you have brought us here to bless us before we enter into this week and the rest of this month and year. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that through your word this morning, you will speak to us. Grant us understanding. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let me start by reading from the book of um, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verses 11 to 12. Matthew 13, 11 to 12. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever asks, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that which he hath. Hallelujah. From the theme for the month, I want to bring out a subtopic. I call it battle for supremacy in the kingdom. Or better battle for supremacy of kingdom. What we are trying to say is that there is a battle for supremacy. Kingdoms are at war. Against one another. There is an opposition. Battle for power. Battle to subdue. Battle to rule. Between a kingdom and another kingdom. From the scripture we have read. It was the interpretation or the submission of Jesus Christ. After he has given us the disciple the parables which we regard as the parable of the sower. 
And they now came to Jesus. They said, why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus answered, it is for you that is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. For to them it is not given. There are mysteries of the kingdom. There are things that are realities of the kingdom. That we must annex. We must have access to. When the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All other things shall be added. Because it is when you have the key, the access into the kingdom. That is when you can have access to all other things. When you gain access into the kingdom. Then you'll be able to benefit in the realities. The provisions that are made in the kingdom. Hallelujah. If you look at the book of Daniel chapter 4. I'm talking about supremacy. Battle for supremacy in the kingdom. Or of the kingdom. What we are saying is that there are battles, kingdom versus kingdom there are kingdoms at war and there are battle and this battle is to gain supremacy look at Daniel chapter 4 Daniel chapter 4 and of course don't forget that it was an interpretation to the dreams of Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he could not understand the dream. And eventually, an interpretation was given. And the interpretation that was given, verse 11 now tells us, he says, the tree grew. Sorry, yes, Matthew 4, 17. Sorry, 17. Look at 17, sorry. He said, this matter is by the decree of the watchers. And the demand by the word of holy ones. For the intent that the living may know. That the most high. Ruleth in the kingdom of men. And give it to whomsoever he will. And set it up over it. The basis of men. I will give you interpretation of that place. But look at Daniel chapter 2 also. In Daniel chapter 2 verse 36 It was another interpretation of another dream Say this is the dream I will tell the interpretation thereof before the king Thou O king are king of kings For the God of heaven had given thee a kingdom Power and strength and glory And wheresoever the children of men dwell the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven hath he given into thy hand, and hath made thee ruler over, over them all. Thou art this head of gold. Now, I don't want to read all the scriptures there, but he's still talking about King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel was telling the king, God has given you a kingdom. God has set you up. In fact, Nebuchadnezzar was addressed as king of kings. <laughs> Is it not Jesus we call king of kings today? But the power, powerful Nebuchadnezzar then, he was addressed as king of kings. And even the almighty God acknowledged that. That Nebuchadnezzar, he was so strong. And he has an expanse of empire. So he has other kings over other empires. But that were submitted or under submission under Nebuchadnezzar. That is how powerful his kingdom was. But God made him to understand in the first place we read. 
that there is a decree of the watchers. God Almighty is the one that set up a man. Is the one that put forth a king. Is the one that enthroned kings. But every king must understand that Almighty God Himself rose among the kingdom of men. When I was preparing for this sermon, it did not even occur to me initially that there's going to be a change of government this month. <laughs> Praise God. That we're going to have another, you know, inauguration. That this 29th, another king will take over. Call it president. Whatever you call him. He becomes the number one person in the entire nation. <clears throat> when he coughs, his cough is not ordinary. When he sneezes, his sneeze is not ordinary. When he says something as the commander in chief of armed forces, as the one that is in charge of a kingdom, because there is no kingdom without power. And I'm saying that every kingdom is a battle for supremacy. Now, whatsoever you think the incoming president is, you can say whatever you want to say. But by 29th, be careful of what you say. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Be careful of what you say. If he says your house should be demolished, there is nothing you can do about that. If he says it's going to make your stay in Nigeria difficult, there is nothing you can do about that. He's not only the head of government, he is the commander in chief of the armed forces. He has the soldiers, <clears throat> all the rank of soldiers, the navy, the air force, and the grand army, he has them under his command. If you ask them to move, the president has spoken, they will move. But the power of Nebuchadnezzar was even more than this. He was ruling over kingdoms. But God made him to understand. And God is making whosoever is taking over government in any nation understand. That with all their authorities, with all their powers, that he, God, <clears throat> is he the ruler in the kingdom of men. He is the one that can overthrow a kingdom. He is the one that can silence a man. Somebody may be powerful and nobody can catch him. But there is a God that can deal with him. Are you listening to me? Praise God. In this second dream, there are four levels of kingdom. Nebuchadnezzar had this, you know, the image. And he saw this huge image. And he saw it divided, you know, with different kinds of uh, 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 elements. He saw that the head is of gold. He saw another part of the neck, you know, you know to, the, to the waist, you know, of silver. He saw part of it that is of bronze. He saw another part that is of clay, mixed with iron. <laughs> Praise God. And he saw in that dream that a stone was cast from nowhere. And this stone hit against the, the feet that is mixed with iron and clay. And the whole image fell down flat, crumbled. And Daniel was now interpreting and said, King Nebuchadnezzar, there are levels of kingdoms. Now you are the head, you are the, you are the gold. But there are other kingdoms that will come after you. They will not be as strong as you are. Just like gold is more precious than silver. Just like silver is more durable than bronze. And of course, you can't compare bronze with iron or clay. That will be the graduation of the kingdoms. Shout hallelujah. And that's what we have, what made, brought us to where we are today. 
that now there is no person that you say that he is the king of kings. Or there is a president that is the president of presidents. You can say to honor the American president. But the Russian president will say no. Are you listening to me? Praise God. The German chancellor will say no. And it continues like that. I'm still driving out a point. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 8 verse 7. The supremacy. Battle for supremacy. In the kingdoms. 1 Samuel chapter 8 verse 7. And we are so. Chapter 8 verse what? 7. 1 Samuel 8. And the Lord said unto Samuel. Echoing unto the voice of the people. In all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee. But they have rejected me. That I shall not reign over them. We are getting somewhere. Now you see. At a particular time. Let me read from my notes. Israel has been ruled. The king. Almighty God was their ruler. Was their head of government. <laughs> Praise God. But suddenly at the time, they rejected God. God has been ruling through the priests. Israel now sought for constitutional amendment by asking for a king to rule them. Like other nations, but not to be led by God through the priests who always led them either to war or govern the affairs of the nation. In the constitutional reform of Israel, we can see the dynamic of three factors. In any government of this world, in the kingdom of this world, like I said, that it is no longer, you know, total. People come to government for one reason or the other. People are fighting to take over the rulership of domain for one reason or the other. War is going on between Ukraine and uh, Russia because of the power for dominance. Power for supremacy. War is going on in Sudan today. Two generals felt that we should be in charge. Two army generals. And the country is thrown into battle. It is a battle for supremacy. Kingdom warring against kingdom. Now you can see that there are things. When Israel was asking for king. They were asking for constitutional reform. And there are things that are major factors. Number one. Man right to self-determination people run the system of government that please them any kingdom you see system of government it is a choice of the people and that is why in united nations charter self-determination is allowed anybody can say okay we want to stand on our own initially the government of that nation would not want them to go but if they continue to, uh, to fight, after, after some time, the United Nations may step into it. As if they want to go, let them go. Because you have signed into the shutter. Anybody that wants self-determination. So all these uh, government, democracy, um, uh, communism, socialism, dictatorship, Monarchial, they are all system of government and choice of people. It is human beings that choose what they want to be. But we are saying that in all these governments, in all this kingdom, there is a God factor. Because the Bible says God reigns in the affairs of men. Psalm 109 verse 19. Sorry, 103 verse 19. 
Psalm 103 verse 19. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens. And his kingdom ruleth over all. It is the kingdom of God that rules over all. I'm trying to say that with all the battle for supremacy. From one kingdom or the other. One nation against another. One group of people against another. One court group against another. Because you don't know that, you see, people that join court, why do they join court? They want to. They want to have supremacy. They want to have a control. And, and the funniest thing is that by the time you join a court, after some time, you learn that there is another court that is stronger than the other one. And you want to go and join that one. And from that one, you know there is another supreme court. And that's why people that are seeking for power, they will continue to go deeper and deeper into the world of darkness. They will continue to go deeper into the world of darkness. But for those of us who are children of God, we don't know what God has given to us. Talking about the realities of the kingdom, that there are things that are benefits. That we have a kingdom. We belong to a kingdom. A kingdom that is supreme. A kingdom that is over every other kingdom. If you don't understand this kingdom. <clears throat> you will not be able to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Now you see people are. You know everything you see in the governmental system of the world. It is just all efforts to have control. Amen. I say amen. amen. In 1919, the League of Nations was formed. After the First World War, nations came together. It was called the League of Nations. And what was the purpose? It is primarily mission was global peace. They want peace. But it failed. If it did not fail, there will not be second world war. The second world war came up again. Then came the United Nations. After the world war two. It subsists till now. But with global challenges. Now, we are in United Nations that want to tell Ukraine, Russia, stop it. Can they do that? Or tell Sudan, stop it. Or the challenges that are confronting the nations of the world. Everybody is looking for peace. But the more people seek for peace, the more peace eludes them. Hallelujah. Invariably, this organization... Or its replacement, whatever name it is called, we still come under the control of the Antichrist. The Antichrist will now be the one that will be in charge one day. Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 to 6 confirms that. And that's what the Bible says that even by now, there is spirit of Antichrist. <coughs> There is spirit of Antichrist. So, we must understand that the Antichrist is going to be the, the, the supreme general one day of the world. And the spirit of Antichrist is already at work. He's already at work. Satan will influence the nations against God and seek to annul his sovereignty. Everything that the devil is trying to do. Is to pull down the authority of God. And you see things happening. Hallelujah. Praise God. Maybe if you don't listen to news. It's good to listen to news. At least listen to the world news once a day. Or read news. There are young people today that all oh, the Android phone, they will never read news there. 
It is only WhatsApp and uh, chat chats and uh, Facebook and things like that. And there are nations. I'm, I'm not, you, when you read the world news, you begin to see the prophecy of the Bible coming to fulfillment. Prophecies coming to fulfillment. Shout hallelujah. I was reading a, a, a news of, um, of uh, a person that was, uh, you know, arrested. Yeah. Yes, I was, uh, yes, I look at it, you know, of how police, I think in Germany now, came to take a child, a boy, a boy from his parents. Why? Because the parents taught the child that trans, trans, what gonna, trans, transgenderism and, uh, and uh, homosexual and things like that, that it is against the doctrines of the religion. That is against the religion. That it is wrong. And because maybe the boy, that boy now said that. I don't know whether we have butcher in this church. Hallelujah. And now, because the parents, because they taught the child that, uh, the boy, about um, a five or six year old boy. Maybe the boy get to school and now say that to change to another gender, you want to be a girl, that want to be a boy, a boy that want to be a girl, all right? Or almost that all this thing, they are wrong. That is against the faith. Please came to the house to take the boy from his parents. Hallelujah. Not to arrest, not because they want to arrest the child. But they said the parent is teaching the child the wrong thing. What is against the policy of government? So they, would, they took, you don't know what it means to take your child away from you. To go and give your child to another person. And you may not see that child anymore. In this our world. And you said the Antichrist is not at work already. That the spirit of Antichrist is not at work. It is happening from one nation to the other. There are some things you cannot say in America. You can't say it in Canada. You will be arrested. Hallelujah. We can preach anything in Africa. Thank God for Africa for now. Amen. That we said no to homosexuality. No to lesbianism. No to this. No to that. You can't say you are a boy or a man. You want to become a girl. No. Oh, you are a man. You want to marry another man. No. You are a lady. You want to marry another lady. No. But all those countries that I'm talking about. Even the church is being threatened. If two guys are in your church, if they say they want to marry, if the pastor say, I'm not going to marry you, they will go and report the pastor to the government. The pastor will be arrested. Eh? And said, you, why should you know you're not married to man and man together? That you are, not, you are not following the law of the land. You are doing contrary to the law of the land. That is the world we are living in. Shout hallelujah. The spirit of antichrist is already here. You have heard of, you know, sodomy. In the days of the Bible. Long, long time ago, over 3,000 to 4,000 years ago. The same spirit that was operating in Sodom and Gomorrah. That may God to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Is the same thing that is still going on now. And that is why you see. We are saying the almighty reigns in the affairs of men. God will judge. God will judge. Something will happen. Nation will continue to crumble. God will show himself forth. 
as the almighty God. You saw what happened in Brazil not too long ago. What happened in Brazil? They had a carnival in a particular part of the province in the country. And they began to, they now have, you know, they now have, they, I mean, they, 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 they have an idol that they are celebrating. That is Satan. They now make Satan as the God that they are worshipping. They now show, speak somebody like Jesus. And carries, takes some on, on people are demons. They were now beating that person on the streets. You know, making jest of Jesus. Making jest of Jesus. And say Satan is the king. Satan is the ruler. Satan's supremacy. When they were doing all this, making jest of the Christian faith. Running down Jesus. All that Jesus suffered to establish his kingdom. For him to reign on earth. <clears throat> so that men might be redeemed back to God. <clears throat> they were doing all this. It was a big carnival. After they finished their own. Few weeks after that. <laughs> in that same province. Rain began to fall. Flood began to come. Gabriel came up. Until their house were submerged. The thousands of people died. The rain that could not be stopped. In that same place. Where they did all that. You know. They God, God, the rain, the flood destroyed. They were submerged. Their houses were submerged. Until those who are Christians began to pray and say, God have mercy. Shout hallelujah. God reigns in the affairs of men. Why am I starting, you know, starting off like this? I want you to understand when we talk about the supremacy of the kingdom. There is a battle for supremacy. But this kingdom we have now, which belongs to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which also find ourselves in. That is where the will of God reigns. And that's why, you know, the sovereignty of God is retained. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. He said, We are for. Hebrews chapter 12, 28. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. There is a kingdom which cannot be moved. Like the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar that later crumbled, that was destroyed. And God shows supreme mercy to the extent that for a period of about seven years that Nebuchadnezzar was eating grasses in the bush like animal. Until he acknowledged that God reigns in the affairs of men. We are for, we are for we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace. Whereby we may serve God acceptably with reference and godly fear. Verse 29 says, For our God is what? It's a consuming fire. Praise the Lord. Talking about assessing the realities of the kingdom, there is an invitation that is given to us. There are kingdoms of men. There is a kingdom of God. This is the kingdom that Jesus has purchased. The kingdom that cannot be moved. The Bible said there is a kingdom that cannot crumble. Like, like every other kingdom of this world. Whether international kingdom or national kingdom or local kingdom. You understand what I'm saying now? Or kingdom of one corner or the other. Everybody is fighting to take over, to take charge. Do you know that in your area of business there are kingdoms? There are people that are in charge. You say, ah, we are selling in the Bodhija market, there are kingdoms. 
You say, okay, ah, we are, <clears throat> we are selling, you know, our motor parts, you know, or vehicles. There are kingdoms there. Ah, okay, we are selling building material. There are kingdoms there. Shout hallelujah. Tell me what you are doing that there are no kingdoms that are built around it. At times they will start like society. They will start like what? A society. They say, uh, a tailoring association. It is a kingdom. Amen. If you want to go far in that society, there are people that are principalities there. They want to show you the way. If your tailoring is doing, doing well, if your catering is doing well, they will invite you. Ah, this, this lady, come. Let's show you the way. 